Hey, it's Lauren with Bargain Bead Box. Today we are going to make a very simple stretch bracelet from the June Sunken Treasure Collection. This is a really easy, quick design, um, and it's honestly one of my favorite bracelets. I've gotten so many compliments on it, and it is incredibly simple. So we're just gonna we're gonna go ahead and get started. It is very easy to do. So we've got the number five six millimeter white lava stone rounds from the box. And I've got some 0.5 millimeter stretch cord. This is wire 461 from beadboxbargains.com. And these are the only two things that we're gonna use. I'm gonna cut some string, get my beads set up, and we'll get going. All right, so I have cut about a 20 inch strand of stretch cord that's probably longer than I need, but I like to have a little extra to work with. So to get started, we are going to put six beads on our cord and um, one thing that um, I have noticed with these is that the hole size in the lava stone vary slightly. You are going to want a bead with a nice big hole to be the third bead you put on your string. Um, don't ask me how I know I went to join this bracelet up together and it was kind of a giant pain. So um, the last bead that you put on, number three and number six, you're going to want to make sure they have nice large holes here. So the third bead and the last bead. So this is my third bead. That one looks good. Now I'm going to put two more and they can have the smaller holes so you don't need to run any other string back through these. And then the sixth bead. You can also try to pick one that has a larger hole. All right, now with your sixth bead, you're going to take it and you're going to string the other end of your cord through the opposite direction. And then you've got your little cord end sticking out on either side. We're just going to pull that. I'm going to hold the ends of the cord so I pull evenly. And now you've just got a nice little ring. So now from here on out it's going to be really simple and repetitive. We're just going to do two beads on either side of the string and then we're going to go both ways through another bead. So two beads on this side and then two beads on the other side and then we'll go both ways through a fifth bead. So I like to make this style of stretch bracelet um, especially for summer wear with these lightweight beads because it's just it's a lot of fun it's a little bit lacy looking and um, honestly they've done really well for me at craft fairs and such they're just something a little different and since this is about a 15 inch strand it'll make roughly a seven inch bracelet um, if you need a longer bracelet than that you can use an additional strand we do have extras available Hang on, I'm tangling myself up here. Um, <laughs> extras available on the website, or you can just add a clasp and get some extra length that way. That's a trick I like to use too. So, and we are just going to keep on doing this two beads on one, three on the other, and back through that third bead with the opposite strand until the bracelet is long enough and or we've used up our beads. But I have about a six and a half inch wrist so I actually didn't need the whole strand for mine but just a heads up depending on how large you want or small you want to make it you will need uh, more or fewer beads but I love the lava stone they're so textured oh here's a here's a quick tip too if you are having trouble getting both of here I'll do it over the gray getting both strands through just hold them together like this and then move the bead over the strands and I tend to have better results with that method if for some reason it doesn't want to just slide through nicely. Some of them you really have to convince that they want to be on this bracelet but they tend to see reason in the end. No, I really like Lava Stone. It's, it has such a fun pattern and um, that combined with the like loopy, slightly lacy shape of this bracelet, I just, I really love it. And it's lightweight, so it doesn't feel like you've got a ton on. I used to make these bracelets with um, man-made imitation coral, like 
colored resin basically and I would sell so many of them in the summer. It does look really cute with four millimeter beads too but uh, it takes a lot longer. <laughs> I am not the world's most patient beater so six millimeter is my favorite size to use for this. It goes really quick and still looks lacy. And it's basically just a variation on like your classic daisy chain bracelet. Simple, simple, simple. But I still like it. And like I said, I've had good luck selling these in the past. I used to just like put on a movie and make a couple. All right, now we're going back through. And again, the way I like to do that is line these cords up together and then move the bead over the end. You can also use a beading needle if you want. Needles scare me, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the most coordinated people. <laughs> so I just go with it. But you definitely could if you wanted. Hmm, all right. Again, two on each side, and then both ways through that fifth bead. Find one with a good hole here. There we are. All right. And, um, yeah, if you do want to add a clasp, you can absolutely do that. I would probably recommend, uh, let's see here. Sorry, I'm just getting myself confused. There we are. <laughs> Recommend um, maybe going back through this bead with uh, some tiger tail or something. And so you can connect there or just wire, just make yourself a little, little wire loop. But anyway, it's also easy to connect and just do a stretch bracelet, which is my favorite. I love stretch bracelets. Maybe it's because I'm a child of the 90s, but <laughs> love, love, love them. All right, here we go back through the opposite direction. <laughs> and it's coming together. Yeah, so you can, uh, you can absolutely make these with gemstones also. They do end up being a little bit heavier and I find the lightweight beads with stretch cord just tend to have more longevity. Um, I would probably, if you're using heavier beads, try to find ones with 1.5 millimeter holes so that you could run 0.7 millimeter stretch cord through them twice. The 0.5 is um, strong and stretchy, but it is slightly more prone to breakage than the larger sizes in my experience. And you can, I absolutely did make my first one of these with the 0.7 millimeter stretch cord. So if that's what you've got, um, you should be fine. But I did spend a lot more time looking through and trying to find which of the lava stone beads had the largest holes. And with the 0.5, it doesn't matter nearly as much. And I had quite a time connecting to this end over here. Cause like I said, I did not even check what my third bead was what the hole was like and of course of course it was it had the smallest hole on the whole entire strand I am certain and I had quite a time getting my cord back through to connect <sighs> but I learned my lesson alrighty and you can also um, like you could switch it up and do your third and sixth beads like the a crystal rondelle or a bicone or something and there's just so many different variations you can do with this technique this is just the simple, 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 but I like simple. I wear simple. So that is what I am doing today. All right. And there we are. Do, do, do. I started making stretch bracelets. Oh. That was one of the first things that I made that wasn't, that wasn't a friendship bracelet. So I actually started beading um, when I wore, I believe it was my 11th birthday. 
a friend gave me a uh, friendship bracelet kit. You know, like the, you've got all the embroidery floss and there's colorful patterns and knots and they take forever. Um, but they were, they're really fun to make and my favorite one used seed beads in the pattern. I'll okay, put this one on the side. Um, and I ran out of seed beads before I ran out of embroidery floss. And so I went to my local craft store to get more. And the minute I walked in that bead aisle, I was obsessed. I had no idea. There were so many different kinds of beads in the world. I loved them all. I had to have them all. I couldn't afford them all. But <laughs> I spent my birthday money and left with a new hobby. That would eventually become more of an obsession. But you know, you know how that how that goes. And zero regrets. But anyway, um, I also got a little book on making these little beaded animals with, you know, this very similar technique where you just do like little rows. There's, there's jewelry industry words for these things that I should know when I do know, but my brain's not cooperating with me. And um, anyway, yes, that kind of the back and forth wiring technique made these little beadlings animals, you know, the lizards, if any of y'all ever made those at summer camp, etc sure you know exactly what I'm talking about but anyway that was that was kind of how I started so this feels a little bit like going back to my roots and I love it all right so this is gonna be my last one so actually I don't need a third bead what I'm going to do now is come back through um, so I've got two on each end here you can see I'll move to the middle so you can kind of kind of see what I'm doing a little better maybe. So you've got two on each end here. And now I'm gonna come back through the middle piece of that first loop that I made. Go down through it. And now I'm going to tie off. So here, I'm gonna tie a square knot. I'm gonna take the right piece over and under around the left. And now I'm going to put the left piece over and under around. Well, it's now on the right because I just, you know, but yes. All right. So there we go. I'm going to tie one more square knot just for extra security. And then I would, you can put a dot of glue or clear nail polish to secure that knot if you would like that's all there is to it. I'm going to trim off the end now. I like putting the knot here because it kind of disappears into the pattern a little better. And then all you have to do is give it a trim. And one thing I do, I could probably have trimmed it a little closer, but when I trim stretch cord, I do, I try to leave it just a little tiny bit of a tail to hold on to. Because sometimes when you stretch it, sometimes it'll start to slip just the tiniest bit. And if it's got a little teeny tiny bit of a tail there, it is much more likely to grip and stay in the knot. So there you go. There's your stretch bracelet. It has some good stretch to it. This one's I think a little longer than the first one I made because I just went until I ran out. So yeah, it's got a little room on me. But um, I just kind of wanted to show the length that you can make if you use the whole strand. And that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll have um, we'll have some more creative corner and um, other fun looks from the June box coming up soon. Um, we are also, uh, July's box should be on its way. Um, and if you haven't, if you're a member and you haven't got a shipping notification yet, that'll be coming soon. So keep an eye out. Um, and I hope you all have enjoyed playing with June's beads. I know I have. And we would love for you, if you want to share with us what you've made, you can join our Facebook group, the Bargain Bead Box Creative Corner. We would love to have you join so many of our incredible members to share their photos and designs every month. It's so inspiring and such a great, positive, uplifting community. So if you're interested in joining us there, we'd love to have you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and a happy Independence Day holiday. Happy beating.